Your next homework assignment is due on Sunday after we get back from the break. And um, I've got a couple of announcements regarding the homework. Um, I think it would be best if you do include a cover sheet. Uh, normally, I, I don't have a preference, but I think it makes it easier for the grader just to keep things organized. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Whatever template you're normally using is fine. Just make sure that it includes your, uh, your name and your ID number. Also, you know, sometimes if you rip paper from a notebook, it can have the little pieces on the side. Please uh, submit something professional. Remove all the extra bits of paper. Um, make sure that the pages are stapled together and not using a paper clip because if it's a paper clip, there's a very good chance that some of your work will get lost. Um, I don't post homework solutions online and the main reason for that is because I don't want the solutions to get out for the students who take the class next semester. You know, like um, you're having to solve the work without the solutions in front of you. So hopefully it can be similar for the students next semester. Uh, one last point that I thought was pretty interesting that was made when I was at the Australian International School yesterday going to like a conference for my kids' school. The uh, headmaster there mentioned that there's a difference between homework and studying. You know, homework is something that's assigned by the teacher. Studying is something that a student chooses to do. And in studying, you make the choice of what you're going to learn about based on what you already know about what you understand and what needs more work. And so studying um, is a very important thing for you to do. If you want to get an A or a B in this class, it's not just enough only to do the homework. You have to do the homework, of course, then you have to do something more. You have to actually uh, direct your own learning and study the material. You know, that may be reading the book, it might be reviewing the lectures later, uh, trying to define terminology from the from the lectures, but all those things are important to actually understanding the material. So today we're going to continue our discussion of reactors, and specifically we're going to talk about um, how different types of reactors mix what's inside of them, and how we can measure and represent what is mixed. And so to begin by talking about mixing, we're going to talk about uh, what's known as a signal. Sometimes it's called a tracer. And so think about if we had a glass of water, and we're considering this glass of water to be our reactor. If you put a bit of ink inside of the glass, then the dye or the ink, how it moves and how it spreads out inside of this glass can give you an idea of how it's being mixed. So let me ask you a quick question. How would this picture be different if I put a spoon into the glass and if I started stirring, this, stirring the solution around? How would, the, how would the image look different? It would be everywhere. We wouldn't have a clear spot, and it wouldn't be stuck at the bottom there. If we started to stir, it would be dispersed. Right now, even though we don't see the spoon, we still know that there's no mixing, just by the fact that we can, interp we can interpret um, what's going on with that image. So a signal is something that is conservative and instantaneous. Conservative means it doesn't react. And so it's a chemical that isn't being broken down inside of the reactor. We're, we're adding to the reactor only to understand how mixing happens. Instantaneous means we're going to be making assumptions through the rest of today's lecture that as soon as it's added to the reactor, it's instantly spread out through the entire volume if it's a completely mixed flow reactor. Or that if we're adding it to a plug flow reactor, it's instantly mixed among the plug that is flowing in the plug flow reactor. We'll look at some more pictures that help to explain that point. So conservative means it's not reacting. Instantaneous means it mixes instantaneously. So consider the case of a mixed batch reactor. And that's what we just were seeing with the, uh, the glass of water. Uh, it's stirred in this case, so it's a tank that's being stirred, and suddenly I put in the dye. This graph is representing the concentration inside of the reactor with respect to the initial concentration. So just to define the terms, C0, as usual, means the beginning concentration. Beginning concentration. And then C 
is the concentration at some time. So let's look at this graph. Zero is when the signal was added at time zero. This black line is down at the bottom and then suddenly it goes up to one instantly. What does this ratio of one mean? If C versus C naught is one, what does that tell us? It's the same, right. So in other words, the concentration at some time is equal to the initial concentration. So all of the time after zero, the concentration stays the same. So nothing's flushing this, nothing's flushing the tracer out. It's just, it's there. All right. So this is what's called a C curve. And uh, it's a plot of concentration relative to the initial concentration versus time. Does everybody have a copy of today's in-class exercise, by the way? Okay. Does yeah. Does this mean that there is no reaction taking place yet? Yes. And uh, because it's conservative, there's not going to be any reaction. You know, if, if it was a normal, like if there was a reaction, then our curve would look like maybe this. But whatever it is in there, it's not affected by being in the reactor. The first kind of reactor we were looking at is a mixed batch reactor. Batch means all of the liquid goes in at once, it's stirred, and then it all comes out. The plug flow reactor always has something coming in and it always has something coming out. And the reaction, if there's going to be one, the reaction is inside of this pipe or inside of the canal. We looked at, at a canal during the in-class exercise from last time. In a plug flow reactor, there's no longitudinal mixing. Does anyone here remember geography? When you're looking at a map, there's latitude and longitude. How do you keep those straight? Do you remember how do, you know, is the latitude side to side, up and down? The way that I remember it is latitude, it sounds like a ladder. And so latitude is the horizontal lines and longitude is the side to side lines. So here this is saying there's no longitudinal mixing. So the interpretation of that is that if I put in my tracer, you know, I, I ins the water is flowing through this reactor. Here I have my cup of dye, and I pour it in all at once. So here is my dye. What's on, what's on the right side of the dye? Yep, there's water over here, and on the left is more water. But all of this is my tracer. Here is my tracer or my signal. So it's flowing through the reactor. By the time it gets to here, if there's no longitudinal mixing, that means it's all still together. None of this dye has spread out in a perfect plug flow reactor. All right? That's the definition of a perfect flow, plug, plug flow reactor is that the signal isn't mixing longitudinally. So you can, in the side of the notes, you can write longitudinal means side to side. If it was mixing longitudinally, then it would look like this. By the time it gets to here, it would be more spread out. And you notice that my lines are smaller. Why do you think I drew it, drew it so that the lines are smaller instead of they're thick here? Exactly. So it's spreading out. The concentration is lower if it's diffusing. That's what it would look like if there was longitudinal mixing. Residence time is how long the particles spend inside of the reactor. So how long it takes for the tracer to go from the in to the out. It's the travel time, the residence time. We can calculate residence time. Last time I introduced theta or T sub theta. 
Uh, some of these figures are going to have T bar. It all means the same thing. It means how long a particle spends inside the reactor. For the same reason as question two on the quiz. It's because if it doesn't spread out, then the high concentration stays together, then it can react more quickly. It's really a good thing if you don't have mixing. Isolation favors a first order reaction. I'm glad you asked because that's a point that I'll make again and again. How important it is in first order kinetics that the high concentration stay separate from the low concentration. It's like making a hamburger, right? You have the lettuce which is cold, the beef which is hot, and you don't put them together too early. Otherwise, the lettuce will be warm and the beef will be cold. You want to keep it separated until the very last minute. Then you have the perfect hamburger. So the perfect reactor keeps the high concentration away from the low concentration because of kinetics. Okay, so another way to think of residence time is how long it would take to fill the reactor. If it was empty and the water is pouring in, then the amount of time it takes to fill the reactor from empty to full is the same as the travel time for one particle coming in and then flowing out. This is the C curve for a plug flow reactor. Now it's different. It looks very different from the, um, from the mixed batch reactor. Remember our mixed batch reactor looked like a step. We had zero, then instantly it goes up to one. Where this is the concentration relative to the initial concentration, and here is time, and at zero, suddenly it goes up to one. Who can uh, take a guess at what this story is, what story is being told by this figure? Okay, the flow is continuous. What about the tracer? What's happening to the tracer? Okay, that's right. So there's no concentration. We're going to say um, what's exiting the reactor. Here is our plug flow reactor. This curve is showing what's coming out. Here's the in. Here's the out. Remember, we have our tracer, which is some sort of a, uh, a dye that isn't going to mix. It's not going to react. We pour it in, and so it's all together. Okay, so what this tells us is that it instantly exits at T bar. So at the residence time, it instantly exits. So the concentration relative to the initial concentration, it's infinite because it just it hasn't spread out and it hasn't mixed. Okay, what I'd like you to do is consider question one on the in-class exercise. I ask a hypothetical. And there's uh, you're not going to get penalized for having a the wrong guess, because I say at the beginning, take a guess. You don't know the answer to number one, so just see what you can, what you can figure out. Does everybody have one? Yeah. Yeah, because there, there's no concentration. You know, concentration you have to have mass and volume, but we say it's not spreading out. So the concentration is very, very high. Hmm? Yeah, a graph. Yeah, draw a simple figure. What's that? Just do your best guess. Okay, 
So everybody has had a, a moment to do their best guess of what that might look like. Hmm. I guess I didn't copy over the solution to my drive. Let me draw what it's going to look like. So problem one on this in-class exercise says, what will the C curve look like for a plug flow reactor if there is some mixing? So first we have our example of if there's no mixing. So this one is no mixing. And we do have mixing. Then by the time it gets over to here, it started all together. If there's longitudinal mixing, then what is the plug going to look like by the time it gets to the out? Exactly. I see you're going like this. It's going to be more spread out. Very good. So this is what the C-curve looked like for the plug flow reactor if there was no mixing. It was just a line at T-bar, which means at the residence time. So here we have time. Here we have concentration relative to the initial concentration. What should we do for the C-curve if there is mixing? Concentration tells us that uh, the C-curve tells us the concentration relative to the initial concentration. It's going to be like this. It's going to look like a bell curve, actually. Here's the residence time, T-bar. So what this means is that some of it spreads out very quickly, but not very much. Some of the dye is going to spread out very quickly, and that's what we see first, is the particles that, for some reason, just because of the turbulence and the random mixing inside of the reactor, they make it to the, the front very quickly. But most of the dye is still in the center. So most of the dye is concentrated around the middle. And that's why we have the highest part of this normal distribution right at T-bar. But then some of the dye is actually spreading backwards. It's not going as for, uh, fast forward as the rest of the particles. And so it's lagging a little bit behind. And so what we should have is a normal distribution for that one. Any questions about that? Uh-huh. We're talking about the concentration of the dye in the water that's coming out. And so the water comes out of the reactor. So far, there's no dye. At the, there's a little bit right at the beginning. Uh, like the first stuff that comes out actually raced forward of most of the plug. So it's not only the concentration in the plug. We're also monitoring concentration before the plug arrives at the end. There's something else that we can draw called an F-curve. And an F-curve is saying the fraction that has exited at a certain time. Instead of saying what is the concentration, it's, uh, it's looking at the total amount of tracer that there is. And so at time T bar, however long it takes to exit the reactor, suddenly all of the tracer is out. And so what would the F curve look like if we have a plug flow reactor? The F curve is also going to have, well, if there is mixing. This no mixing is what it looks like here. If there is mixing, then the F curve is going to look like uh, here at T bar, it's going to be more like this. So a little bit has exited very soon. Most of it is exiting around the residence time. But even still, there's a little bit still remaining as it's continuing to flush out. So this is the F curve for a plug flow reactor that isn't perfect. Do you think there's really any perfect plug flow reactor? 
There's not, because you may remember from fluid mechanics the no-slip condition, that when water is flowing through a pipe, the water in the center of the pipe has a higher velocity than the water at the edge of the pipe. Why is the water at the center of the pipe moving more quickly than the water at the edge? There's friction at the edge. And so the pipe is pushing on the water this way. So the pipe is resisting flow. So the water at the center of the pipe is fast. So then think about how would that affect things if you add a plug of dye? If you add the plug of dye, but we know just from fluid mechanics, the water at the center of the pipe is moving more fast it's going to start to spread out where the plug is over time. And so some of it is going to arrive sooner than the rest of it. And the way we have a good plug flow reactor is we would make the edge very smooth. We would have the flow going slowly so that conditions are laminar, not turbulent. There are things that as engineers we can do to help design a good plug flow reactor. Remember the tapered edges on the channel. We saw the pictures of the tapered, ed tapered edges. Okay, I've already told you in words what the F-curve is, but here's how you can graph it numerically. It's the initial amount minus the amount remaining divided by the initial amount. So if all of the amount exit at once, like that happens in a perfect plug flow reactor, then that's where, where we'll have a step on the F-curve. All right, completely mixed flow reactor. Do part two of the in-class exercise. I'm just asking you to uh, make a guess of what the C curve is going to look like for a reactor like this where there's always water coming in, there's always water coming out. What if I have my tracer, I pour it in, then what is going to be the concentration with respect to the initial concentration coming out? So I'm asking you to draw a C-curve, and remember that on the y-axis of the C-curve is C versus c naught, and here is time. So draw your best guess of what you think the C-curve is going to look like for this reactor. And you can talk with other people. You know, this can be a collaborative. See if they agree with you what the curve should look like. What is the meaning of C versus C naught? That means the concentration at some time relative to the initial concentration. So at time zero, here at time zero, the concentration relative to the initial concentration is one because it's the initial concentration. But it's a little tricky. How come it's not like that? Yeah, what would be the meaning of this curve? The meaning of this curve would be it's speeding up. How quickly you're losing it is getting faster and faster. There would be no reason for that. It wouldn't, you wouldn't all of a sudden start losing it more quickly. But here, why are you losing it more slowly? It's getting more diluted. Right. Um, very good. How come it's not a straight line? How come you're not losing it at the same rate always? Yeah. Right, yeah? It's mixing at the same time that you have fresh water coming in. So it's always getting less and less, but it's sort of like um, the less you have, then you can't lose very much because you don't have very much. At the beginning, you're losing it quickly because there's a lot of dye in there. But then it slows down over time. So what's the easiest way? For those of you who figured it out, how did you figure it out? Huh? Luck? You made a guess and you, were, you had a lucky guess. I said to guess, so it is luck, right? No, it's reasoning. How did you reason? 
How did you visualize it? Yeah? The bathroom? Tell me more. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like a tub? Like a... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So like if, if the water coming from the faucet is discolored, then over time it'll get more clear once it clears up. All right. Yes? Oh, yeah. Why? Well, I guess if we give it a long enough time, it eventually will. Let me draw that more accurately. So in a really long time, you know, eventually we won't be able to measure it anymore. But even after five years, maybe there's a few molecules of dye in there. It's just bad luck that they're still in the tank. All right. We've got two minutes remaining. I just want to show you the uh, equation for a C curve. I won't go through the derivation of it, but this is how we can find the shape of a C curve. The equation down here at the bottom. The concentration relative to the initial concentration. If you know a certain time, and the residence time, you can trace the shape of that curve. And one of the things that's interesting is that at the residence time, when T equals the residence time, how long it takes to completely flush it out one time, there's going to be 36% remaining. So if you have the tank, and it's a 100 liter tank, you put in the tracer, and then you add another 100 liters for flushing, there will be 36.8% remaining. Okay, uh, as we conclude, let's take one final look at these announcements so we're all on the same page before we go our separate ways for the vacation. Remember that your homework three is due at the beginning of class on Sunday the 27th. So, uh, yeah, homework three is due the beginning class when we come back from Eid. So I hope you all have a nice vacation. Please give me those in-class exercises on the, uh, on the chair here, and I'll record the scores in iLearn uh, as quick as I get it done. <laughs>